So for the facelift, we start the incision in front of this temporal tuft. We don't go up here anymore because that raises us up and when it's telltale signs of a facelift when this hairline is raised up too high. This heals very well. You make it right at the hairline. The hairs literally grow through it and it camouflages the incision. We can then come around in the right in front of the ear and that sort of shadow. The tragus will go behind the tragus. We pull it forward, mark right on top of the tragus. That way when we let it go, it pulls the incision inside. Down at the bottom here, we make a little anterior jog right there. What that does is it uh, helps prevent getting a pleat in front of the ear. Then come down in front of the ear. The touch point is here. We come up just a little bit on the ear, not a lot, just a little bit because the incision will migrate backwards. And we likely we not need this. She does not have a lot of skin to go. So we do this, you see there's not a lot of bunching. So we may not need to do this part of this limb. For younger patients, we can get away with called a short flat facelift. We have an incision under the chin here and a chin crease. That's to give us access to elevate the entire neck. So what they'll do is allow us to connect from ear to ear, have a nice draping of the skin. I'm going to come up and release this right here, the mandibular ligament. This ligament helps to create a, an attachment here, the jowl folds over it. So in addition to pulling backwards with our deep plane facelift, releasing this ligament will help to improve the jawline. Also going to have release of the zygomatic and Zygomatic ligament and buccal ligament. So, this is done from the submental area. So, we're elevating right under the skin in that thin layer of fat. We want to leave a nice fat cushion on the skin that looks more natural. If you de devoid the neck of fat, then you can get all kinds of banding and visibility of the platysma. So, we want to have a nice layer of fat on the skin. It's mostly a spreading motion. This plane should be pretty avascular, meaning not many blood vessels. And skin spreading, the line is the lowest, below the lowest neck crease, which is how far we want to elevate to. So we're now releasing the mandibular ligament. We're under the skin. To make sure we're on top of the platysm muscle. That's how we avoid the nerve beneath. That'll give us a much, much better pull and elevation of our jowl. So we come from the mala eminence down to the angle of mandible. That's where we're going to enter our deep plane. Under here is under the skin, and from here on, it's a deep plane down to the jawline. Just for reference, we want to mark where the facial nerve is about two centimeters lateral to the brow, to the tragus. So this is the line of our facial nerve. So we know what we need to avoid as we're lifting underneath. Right at the edge of the hairline, even catching a couple of hairs. So when the hairs grow back, we have some follicles that are buried that grow through the incision that makes a nice camouflage for the incision. And then curving down in front of the ear on the back edge of the tragus. That hides the incision very nicely within the ear. And then down this part, it's sort of a that little L here that prevents from getting a little pleat in front of the earlobe. Around the earlobe. And then we're going to come up on the back of the ear and stop about here. That'll take out most of her neck. She does not have a very lax neck, so I'm not really worried about taking this vertical portion of the incision. Go. So we've lifted up the beginning with the scalpel, staying right under the skin in that fat layer. I'm going to change the facelift scissor. Then we're going to start lifting just underneath here. And I tilt my head down, I can actually see the light shining through the skin. That's how I know we're at the perfect layer. We have one light pointing from over my shoulder and one light pointing from the other side aimed at the skin. So when I go down here, you can see it transilluminate that yellowish color. 
tells me we're in the perfect plane. So we're going to lift up all that line we made that delineates the entrance into the smash for a deep plane lift. And it's a little bit fat up, a little bit fat down, tells we're just in the right layer. Opening up gently, right on top of the smash. We have a little bit more to go. I'm going to go now further down, elevate around the ear so we have a nice facelift flap. So we've now elevated around the ear and I'm starting to elevate down to meet my skin flap. And I want to come up just short of the angle of the jawbone or the mandible, which is right over here. That's how far you want to lift this skin flap up. Tighter to do than coming down around the hairline. For a young patient, it's worth making the shorter incision working in more of a hole because they're more apt to wear their hair up. Now, wearing your hair up is fine even after a facelift if the incision is closed right, but no incision back here always heals better than an incision that almost always looks good. Some people will call this a ponytail incision, all kinds of fancy names to give to it. So we're going to be elevating the neck down to meet our we're almost right over a jawbone right there. Create a straight line. So we're now getting down into the neck. We're going to do a spreading motion. We're going to put us on top of the platysma, which is that muscle in the neck that we call the shaving muscle. Again, if we did a, an open incision here, it would be much easier, much more room, but the goal here is to minimize the incision in this young lady. So make it so it's absolutely completely indetectable that she's had a facelift.